Now, for more on how local governments are combating pollution issues, I'm joined by Michael K. Dorsey. He's Interim Director of the Energy and Environment Program at the Joint Center for Political and Economic Studies. Welcome to the show. Rachel, thank you for having me. Now, one issue with some of these policies is really getting them implemented. So how much is the lack of implementation affecting pollution reduction, and how is that affecting the overall economy for China? Well, you know, now we're in a moment of decoupling. And what do I mean by decoupling? Decoupling is where basically we've seen reduction in pollution, particularly atmospheric pollution, air pollution, especially CO2 pollution. We've seen a reduction in that around the world, more than two dozen countries moving into drastic uh, reductions in air contaminants, but at the same time seeing large economic growth. That's the case not just uh, in places like the U.S., uh, but also across Europe and really in many, many countries around the world. So what we see now is that we can reduce poisons and pollutions and grow the economy at the same time. That's really what the 21st century is about. And we've got to do that, though, in a coordinated way, in a way I think that Beijing is leading on. Beijing is basically saying that across municipalities, across localities, we can reduce emissions, we can reduce pollution, we can see upsides for local communities, for individuals, for individual citizens. We can also, at the same time, see upsides on the economic uh, side in terms of economic growth. And that's what's happening it's happening in China, happening a little slowly in China, but it's really the new context for the 21st century. Now, it's interesting. Why is it happening so slowly? We know that Beijing a while ago also linked um, local government officials' promotions to really meeting these environmental targets, yet they don't seem to be making it a priority. Why not? Well, there's a reason why we use that word bureaucracy, right? Things don't always happen as fast as we'd like. Uh, I think that's the case really around the world. You've seen some really pioneering countries. You take Sweden, for example, you know, almost double-digit reductions in emissions and pollution, and similarly double-digit uh, increases in economic growth. The U.S. has been a little bit behind, even though arguably we've got some of the leading-edge technology, but really it's bureaucracy that slows these things down. You know, you've got localities that are still dialed into 20th century thinking, that there is this sort of jobs and environment debate that's going on there. We might not be able to see upsides on the economic front and reductions in you know, pollution and emissions. But actually, we can see that because when we join together big data with science and with real sort of forward link thinking policies, we can see those both economic increases on, on the upside and then the reductions in, in pollution and, and, and combustion on the, on the other side. So then what do you think could be some ways to really incentivize some of the local governments in China to implement these policies, to really see the positive value for them? Well, I think we're seeing some of that, you know, by tying promotions uh, to those goals in terms of reducing emissions and, and decreasing uh, pollution. Uh, you're going to see some of the upside economic benefits, so continuing to do that, but also connecting uh, policymakers with scientists and with leading thinkers, we're going to see sort of a doubling of efforts uh, in terms of the reductions in pollution and increases on the economic side, economic benefits. Now let's also talk about the inspections. We know that some Chinese industrial companies were saying that they were having supply shortages because of all these inspections, but China's Ministry of Environmental Protection says it was more down to the inappropriate methods that some of the inspectors were using. How do you ensure that stability, that consistency when it comes to these inspections? so that they don't disrupt um, the market. Well, so this is where I think the nexus of putting together regulators with scientists is really, really key. You know, you can come with edicts from, from central government in any country, but if you don't connect those uh, directives, those mandates with science and with leading industries, then you're going to run into problems. That'll basically sort of augment the bureaucratic sort of slowdown in, in making changes. But when we connect leading thinking, science, with uh, regulatory mandates, then we can see not just the changes that we need, but we can see that happening really, really quickly. So that's really, I think, the future. The future is about continuing that strong you know, regulatory commitment, but also connecting that up with big science and, and to, to really deliver those big changes. So what do you think perhaps might be some other ways, other than just the policies themselves, to really get everyone involved? We know that they want to involve the public, also perhaps some, some private enterprises. What do you think are some better strategies? Well, I, I would say that industries are already involved in this, right? You know, industries have really solved this puzzle that they can actually see economic benefits, they can see benefits of the bottom line by reducing not just emissions, uh, you know, and not just you know, pollution, as it were, but really cutting out waste. 
um, because there's money lost in, in, in you know, sort of driving waste. So industries are really leading there, and we've got some amazing examples, you know, whether it's Google, whether it's Intel, where they've made real big commitments to you know, just reduce CO2 emissions, for example, that have been returned to the bottom line. So, so industries are leading the way to increasing those partnerships, the sort of public-private partnerships. That's a key way of doing this. And then tying performance to those, you know, regulatory mandates, you know, making sure that you know, those that are in charge that have responsibility for you know, making sure that you meet those environmental targets are being held to it. Uh, so you tie performance to that and you get a kind of a triple win because the benefits are not only in terms of reducing emissions and pollution and in terms of increasing the economic you know, returns, but also in terms of protecting public health. So it's a triple win that's involved. Triple win indeed. Thank you so much, Michael K. Dorsey, Interim Director of the Energy and Environment Program at the Joint Center for Political and Economic Studies.